Hi booktube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and it's time for a book haul and update on my recent reads of this year. I'm still deciding if I'm going to do a wrap up or not. I did do a review of one of the books I read so far this month. Um, and it's not a Christmas book. I'm one of the people who does, who I still love Christmas, but I don't read Christmas books. Except for, you know, A Christmas Carol. Um, and then I'm reading... But I do still love Christmas. So, but I wanted, so I'm kind of reading books that aren't Christmas related at all. Um, but I wanted to not only update you on that, but also show you... I just... No, I want... <laughs> So what I'm trying to film with my um, Christmas tree in the background, I am still do not know how to do vlogs, so I'm trying to, I decided to go ahead and film a video in front of there again, even though it's really uncomfortable sitting like this. Um, first, let's do a book haul. I'm going to show you some books that I don't know if you guys, if I showed you these books. I mean, although the last videos I technically kind of did show these books to you. Um... But I, I keep, this is the way I try to do a, you know, every time I get, like, at least four new books to remember to show you guys. But I'm, I seem to have failed at that. Um, so I don't know if I showed you that I got a paperback copy of The Historian um, by Elizabeth Costova because I had the hardback. But I prefer, like I said, I prefer paperback when it's a chunky book, so... And this is the one, one of the ones that I probably should get to sooner rather than later. Um, which actually when designing my TBR, what I should have done was pick out the books that I feel like I need to get to. Have like a pile of books I, I probably should get to sooner rather than later. And then have a pile of books that I want to read them. But, you know, it's debatable if I should like... I want to read them. I want to read them. Excited to read them, but I got them more recently, and they haven't been waiting for so long for me to pick them up and calling out to me like, "Read me, read me, read me." Um. But yeah, this is just the paper. Right? And the same thing with um. With um, Stephen Shabosky's Imaginary Friend. This is another one that I've been meaning that I got the hardback from the library and then I returned it because it was taking me too long. And you guys know my reason, how I feel about that. So, um, which when I first saw it, it was like, oh, it looks kind of small compared to the hardback. Um, but then, and the one, and I even you know, was offered the hardback because she was like, you can get the hardback for the hardback for cheap, and but she also said, "Well, unless you don't like hardback," and I said, "I don't like hardbacks," so um, yeah. So I and I do remember where I left off. It was chapter forty-four, um, and I better. And this is one of those books I probably should definitely get to sooner rather than later because you know I actually remember where I left off, and if I wait too long, then I'll feel the need to reread it. And then I got a regular size paperback copy of Clash of Kings because that's the one I'm going to. I've already reread the um, Game, a Game of Thrones, which is the first book, which the series is actually called, at least the book series. I mean, I mean the move, the TV, uh, the TV show is called a Game of Thrones because it's catchy and and it sounds really cool. Um. But that's also what the first book is called. Now, I don't know because I know sometimes the series, when it becomes book series, when it becomes a TV show, they take the titles of books and name epi episodes after the titles of the other, the subsequent books. So I don't know if Game of Thrones, the TV show, did that. But it would make sense if they did. But this is the second book. And what's nice is that about these five books, it's Large print. I love large print. Um, it's funny that I was just thinking about how I used to not like, I used to think if I was reading minuscule print, then, I can't, it's hard to explain, but I used to think of minuscule print as when I'm reading 
more, I'm, you know, reading more sophisticated books, more mature books, because they have small print, and, you know, big print is for, you know, younger people, or, you know, babies or something, well, not baby, you know, so, I felt kind of proud at the time, but now, I'm, like, all about the big print, <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure I'll be even more about the big print when I'm old and real, like actually old, and my eyes are all rhythmic. When I can't think of the word, but you know, when your eyes get all like, it's harder to see when you get old, and it's hard, and your eyes are affected to the point where you can't see as well. Um, I'll definitely appreciate big print even then. But um, so I ended up just buying the second one. I haven't bought the first one yet. I do have the third one on my Amazon wish list. In this size so um, and once I and when I slowly collect all of them in this size I will slowly collect all the subsequent books in the size and then I'll get the first book and that's the same thing I'm doing with um, the all time series because I had those in mass market I'm always being all smart with mass market you know and so there's that one and then Two Edith Warden books that I don't know if I showed you these or not. I got these from the Rose Office. The story, and I think, is also from the Rose Office. But first we have The Buccaneers, which is actually one I got from the library, but I didn't even start reading that one because, you know, there was all these other books. And by then I was starting to feel the anxiety of, oh, I have to return these at some point. Um, so... I got, I saw it at the rest of them. I was like, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. Um, and then Twilight Sleep. I think this one is kind of her version of the Jazz Age, and like also kind of a commentary or a critique or something of, um, you know, um, what's his name? Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's version of things. Although, if what I'm saying is true, if what it's it's true that his wife, it would, the, a lot of the stories were her ideas, then it might be, you know, well, although she didn't write the book, I, you know, she might not have written, written the books, it was just her ideas, and he just added his own thing to it, so. Um, which actually, I hate to say, but I'm not surprised, because I think you keep, like, especially when, when, like, with the whole... Like, once when Big Eyes, when the movies, like, Big Eyes, and what's that movie with, with Kira Knightley, and she's the author of that, you know, book series about that woman, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but it was a similar idea where a man took credit, where her husband, which in both cases, in both stories, I think at first the woman was okay with it or accepted it. But then as time progressed, she wanted credit for it. Um, so it's interesting that when those, around those times, now the last few years, things have been coming out where you learn that it's really the wife and that the man just took the idea and did his own thing, claimed it as his own. You know. And this one, it says, on the top, it says, the classic bestseller now back in print. So, it's interesting when you find out that a lot of, like, a lot of, cla excuse me, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, when a lot of classic work, you find out that it's being, it's reprinted. Like, it got out of print at the time, and then and eventually was out of print, and then it got reprinted. So that today's modern audiences could be, learn more about that read it themselves okay so those are the books that i don't know if i've showed them to you or not i might have shown buccaneers to you guys if i have shown you any of these then i apologize i just can't remember um now here's the ones i know i haven't showed you guys yet um first this is one that is normally not my kind of genre but I thought I would try it out. It was kind of, it kind of reminded me of what, um, um, what is her name? Not Donna Tart, but the, the author of the Dublin Murder Squad series. I cannot remember her name. But what, I think what her 
series, The Dublin Murder Squad, is supposed to be, which is literary thriller or literary mystery or literary, you know, um, that kind of thing, like detective story. And this one, or what, what was her other story? Her other novel was, the standalone was The Witch, the Witch Elm. Like, I think this is supposed to be kind of like that. Oh, and the original owner, um, was Elizabeth Toomey was the original. And it says, Good Girls Revolt, re, is it Revolt? Revolt Amazon. So I guess she was like a lot of readers where she was not a fan of Amazon. Um, oh, and I guess this was a world-renowned book. Because they have a lot of blurbs from Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Spain, and England. <laughs> that that's cool. Well, I guess because it's a um, it's originally from another country. It's just a number one international bestseller. In, in case you didn't get the title, it's The Truth About the Harry Quibert Affair. So, um, um, let me see, Harrison, he gets involved in a, finding out about a murder case, a cold case. This guy, this writer's friend, is implicated in this cold case, but at the time his um his alibi was that he was having an affair at the time. I think I think that's what it says. See, I'm trying not to read it and more impressed by reading it. I actually recently, wa when I watched um, <laughs> there was a video where they were talking about how they don't like it when people um. When people read some read something, read um, on the book that what the book is about, then that's kind of boring. Which okay, I get that. But sometimes, you know, when I buy books, I don't take the time to re memorize what the plot is about unless I hear about it a lot. So, and I have not heard about this, but I want to try this out. And like I said, I only got it for like it was three dollars, so it wasn't that expensive. It's just like getting a book at the dollar store, you know. Um, because they do have books where you're not spending, you're only spending a dollar, so it's not a big of a deal, and if you end up reading, although I still won't feel guilty, um, for putting books on, not even picking up the books that I bought from the dollar store, because, like, I didn't need to waste time buying that book, you know, if I end up not reading it anyway, so, um, but yeah, I want to try this out. Like that is only three dollars, so even if I end up not working, it ends up not working for me. Um, then it's a it's not a huge deal, and also it means that it's not a library, so it's not from a library, so I can take my time with it. That's what I like. I like when I can take my time with a book like this, a book that I normally wouldn't read, and when I'm trying it out for the first time. Um, and I do want to get to this soon, sooner rather than later. Um, and then we got, okay, so I'm, this is one of the situations where I attempted to jump on the bandwagon once before, but I decided not to, and now I'm jumping on the bandwagon again, since, especially since a movie adaptation has come out for the series, and that is Dune. This is the first book in the series, and I had the mass market paperback copy of it, so I rebought it and made sure I bought it in this copy, again, big, big print. I'll make it a little bit easier. By all seven pages, apparently. Um, and I know that the problem, what you're going to run into with older fantasy and sci-fi books, there are going to be some things that women readers aren't going to appreciate um, in this book. There there are things in this book that I think some crit valid criticisms, especially the way they are with 
the way male authors of older books are with the women, how they treat female characters. And I think there's some of that in this book. I'm not 100% sure on that. But the problem is, my thing is I'm a plot-driven reader. So it's frustrating when I like the plot itself. But then there are aspects of it that are like, are you kidding me? You know, really? You still can't, you know, I mean... Especially when those older books are not so old that they wouldn't know any better. But anyway, um, so there is that one as well. This is the first book. There's a lot of, there's quite a few books in the series. And what I'm going to try, what I'm trying to do is reading at least the first book before I even consider buying the next book. Um, and finishing it as well. <laughs> So let's see how long this one is. Okay, so all the extra stuff in the back, like um, the you know all the vocabulary, like all the um, like the glossary and stuff like that, um, the appendix and all that stuff is like in the six hundred page mark. So it officially ends. Let's see, the story itself officially doesn't end. Six hundred and seventeen. That's the last page, and then you have all the, um, the extra stuff like all the appendices and stuff. Um, so there's that one. Another one I want to get to sooner rather than later, especially because I'm trying to, I want to avoid doing that thing I, that I normally do when it comes to series, which is take forever to get to the next book in the series. Be like, oh, I'm going to wait a year or a month before I start the next one. And then instead of waiting, and then end up taking like two, three years, four, or so on, it keeps just taking forever before I finally pick it up. So, next one. I heard about this one via Josh's Book Voyage. Um, and although I had heard about it beforehand, it was a big, it was a big thing back in, you know, back in the days, back in the day when I first joined the booktube community, and that is The Passage by Justin Cronin, and I know that the author, that Justin Cronin has written other books in the series, um, and this is sci-fi, where we have, ooh, there's another note. This, that, see, that is, I agree when people talk about the one of the appeals of older books, you use books, is that there's always something in there, something interesting from the owners from before. Um, there's a little note that I can't read. It's just taking me a minute to look at it because it's green cursive. Um, and really light pencil. But this is kind of basically like, um, like, the 28, 28 franchise, the 28 weeks or 28 days later franchise, where like the zom they use, you know, zombies are created by a virus. It's kind of, or a legend, um, or the, the horror legend where the monster is created genetically or by like a virus or something. I think that's just the same as this, where we're dealing with vampires being created by like something by something and I don't know how I feel about that idea of vampires because I I still do like I'm just not a, I'm not a hardcore fan of vampires but I do like vampires I am a fan to an extent but I think my friend Carrie from Florida in all in honestly Jennifer Brooks too if you watch her you know are both more hardcore fans of vampires than I am um, I was kind of more into the witches and stuff like that, and back in the day. So I don't know if I would have a pro. I don't think I would have as much of a problem with vampires that cr are created by like science, science gone wrong or whatever. I don't think I would be as bothered by that as they would be. Um, of course Terry could surprise me, but she's. I know that she's very particular about her her about her reading, so she probably wouldn't like it either. The idea of vampires created by science. Um, 
but yeah, this I'm definitely, but I'm going to try it. And like, like I said, there's, that's another pile. Basically, that's another pile of books that I'm, that I just got more recently that I'm excited about. Books that I got a while back that I prom I'm still somewhat excited about, but I've taken a long time to get to them and I probably should get to them sooner rather than later. And then there's the books that are kind of in the middle where I am interested in them, but I haven't, like, I'm not excited for them at the moment. That's, that's what I should do. I should go through my books and figure out which ones I'm... And also have a pile of series where there are series where I don't want to fall behind if I haven't read them yet or not. That I don't want to take forever to read the whole series. So, yeah, so I don't know how I feel about it. I, I think I'm going to be more open to that idea. And the last four books kind of go together, but I got two, two, two of them on one day and two of them on the other. They're all series, and again, this was a situation where I had all the books in mass market, except for the last two books, in, um, books five and six of the series. Although, surprisingly, books, the sixth book is in the same edition that I bought for the other ones. I was, you know, I, I thought that was the case, but I wasn't 100% sure when I bought these. But... And I think I've already mentioned this. Can't see it. Uh, you probably can't read it. Um. The Dark Tower series, if you can't tell. Books one through four. There are seven books. Um. Five is a different edition, but it's still, you know, regular size paperback, but I might change it. If I find book five at Books A Million in this edition, then I might get it. Or I might order it off through books and switch out. But although that cover is kind of cool. Um, but you have The Gunslinger, which I just reread, and I... I do not get what people really hate this one. Um, but, because I loved it personally. I mean, maybe to be fair, the, it's not that they hate it. They just don't like this one as good as the, as much as the other books in the series. But, I mean, like, to be fair, people, I get that people get confused from it. Because King just throws you in this world. Um, and it kind of reads like, like you're being told a story or a legend. Um, but there's this, this is the first one. I just finished rereading it, so it's one of the people I'll talk about in my wrap-up if I do a wrap-up. Um, and then this is book two, The Drawing of Three. And with all these books, I vaguely recall some of the plot points. See, this is why I don't like sleeping like this, because my foot is now asleep. The one I'm sitting in. There's that one. And then the ones I bought literally yesterday are The Wastelands, which is volume three. This, I believe, is the one with the creepy train. The train that made me that makes me think of Thomas the Tank Engine, if he were evil. Um, and then book four is Wizard and Glass. And I believe this is, um, this one is one of the ones that they say isn't part of the main story, but it talks about, it's like a sub, a story within a story kind of situation. So, but either way, I have it, so I'm going to buy it. I'm going to read it, because I feel like, um... So, and, and that's right, this was inspired by Robert Browning's poet poem, narrative poem, Child Roll into the Dark, to the Dark Tower King. So if you are poetry fans, this was inspired by a poem, a Robert Browning poem. So yeah, I'm excited to have these, these editions. Um, I love these. And like I said, I have book six in this edition. And I'm gonna get book seven, and I feel like I shouldn't. I should get book five in this edition as well. Um, 
my hesitancy though is because I kind of like my that the edition I have of book five but I'm also if I get this edition of book five then I'm not going to keep it I'm not going to have two copies of one of the books and especially because I don't even know if it's going to be my favorite which book in the series is, gonna, is my favorite okay so this is what I'm currently reading so first I'm currently reading the one I'm actually actively reading is Mr. Timothy um and this is a sequel I'm not technically or a spinoff I guess you could say of a Christmas hero where it's about the character about tiny Tim as an adult and he's trying to get away from that reputation that he had as being this angelic little boy cripple boy you know and I kind of read something interesting where he right his father is dead at this point and when he you know and he is writing kind of a letter to the ghost of his father and I remember he refers to that line in the novel where his father says that Tiny Tim in church has said something along the lines of I want these people to see me to give them hope or to remind them that God heals the 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 blind and the you know the crippled like he's a symbol for that and um and that and there's another another thing that his father you know Bob Cratchit tells his wife that Tiny Tim said that sounds very like oh he's you know like kind of like you know, if it wasn't Christmas, if it wasn't Christmas time when you read that, when I would read that book, the original Christmas Carol, then I would kind of be like, really, Dickens? Um, this whole, like, angelic figure, this angelic child who always says something perfect and always is loving of society and is like, oh, I want to give these people hope and, you know, and like, he says, he reminds his dad that he wish he says something along, Tim says, I, something along the lines of, I wish I could have lived up to that, you know, that reputation, you know, and I tried to live up to that, I pretended to live up to that, um, and really he didn't, which I, I kind of, I like that, because it shows that, you know, it takes the character that is portrayed as very angelic and pure, and wants all good things for society, even if society doesn't always deserve it. And, um, I mean, this is the kid that we end the story with where this kid says, God blesses everyone, even, you know, and how, like, I like how this story shows that he's not pure and perfect, that he's not this angelic figure, he's angelic figure. He's a real little, he was a real boy that want, that was selfish. And was angry at the world, you know, could be hurt by the world and angry and not always the perfect angelic, angelic figure that Dickens painted him out to be in the original story. Like, I really appreciate that this author, Louis Bayard, did that for this, for the character. And then we also finally met, finally have, he has finally been reunited with his uncle after some time of him going and living his life and kind of losing contact from with his family, you know, separating himself from his family a little bit, like wanting to live his own life, you know, he finds out that his uncle is wants to give him money and he's he doesn't like taking his uncle's money. He's kind of tired of it and wants to live his own life. He doesn't want to be dependent on his uncle. So we go to visit Scrooge and... And he's like, and it was so funny because he's like, it's almost like he's overcompensating for his past behaviors back in, you know, in the original story where like he was so not about giving out chari money to charities, um, easily being grumpy and losing his temper. And like, there's a scene when the family comes, he invites the Cratchits to his house, had invited them to his house not too long after Christmas, and, you know, 
little tiny Tim, who's just a little boy, a little kid, always often makes these kinds of mistakes. He's heard his siblings call Scrooge an ogre constantly. It's like their, it was their nickname for him, and he actually slips and refers to Scrooge as an ogre, and they're all like holding their breath, being like, oh my god, he's gonna get mad at us for calling him that. But then he kind of laughs it off. He finds it funny. Um, he, like, still smiles all the time. Like, it's not, it's like, yeah, I was kind of an, you know, probably thinking, yeah, I was kind of an ass before. Now I'm, you know. And there, and it's also, and we're, so we're with him. And he's, like, has these people coming by the house waiting to meet with him so he can give them, donate money to their charity and stuff like that. It's just, he's, like, overdoing it almost. And it's, it's just really, it's funny that he's now, you know, being the complete opposite of his character, the character we are introduced to in the original story. Um, so, which, you know, makes sense. So, it's kind of, so, it's kind of slow going. I only just got to chapter 10. Um, and I don't know how many chapters, I don't know off the top of my head how many chapters there are, but it's definitely very literary. Um, with a little bit of a thriller from what I, because, like, I think he's gonna find, you know, a dead body and all is that this woman or girl could be the next victim and he has to protect her and find, you know, the killer or whatever, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, so far I'm liking it, I'm having a good time with it. And this is the only one that I've actually, like, been reading. Um, and then, but I am also thinking about reading, going ahead and getting started on, I was going to wait until January, but I might go ahead and start reading The Draw in the Three, the second Dark Tower book, and going ahead with that. And, oh, sorry, my foot is asleep. <laughs> this is why I don't like doing this, but I want you guys, I want my tree in the video, so, um, this is, I feel like this is when the story begins, because I feel like, and I think a lot of people would agree with me who have read the Dark Tower series, that the Gunslinger is kind of a prologue to the main series. You know, and the, I mean, I think it's obvious it was necessary what some of the stuff they included, because it introduced you to Roland DeShane, DeShane, or I don't know how to say his last name, um, Roland's character, the Gunslinger, and the Man in Black, and kind of introduce his mission and and also, there's a character that I think does come back later in the story. Possibly in the, at the end of this book, going into the, the third book. I'm excited to read the third book because I love the idea of the creepy train, the evil train. Um, so I might go ahead and start this one soon, sooner rather than later. And then, this is another one that I need to do this one soon. This is another one that I need to get to soon. It was one of the first books I bought when we moved here. And that is The Pillars of the Earth. Now, it wasn't this edition that I had. It was actually a mass market edition. So, I feel like I need to start this one and um, sooner rather than later. But it's a chunker, so... Um, But yeah, definitely, I feel like I want to get to this one. So I might start this one today. The good news is I'm off tomorrow, so that's good. So even if I don't get to this one today, I can at least start this one. I have tomorrow, and then I gotta, and then I gotta go back to work. Probably work a few days, then you know Christmas comes around, and then like I said, I'm hoping for to be able to get New Year's off as well. Like I got out, I was able to get out as um working Christmas Eve because I asked way, way in advance to have that time off because we might be spending time, with, probably spending time with family. So, um, so he asked way off in advance so you can get that time. So that is my reading, my recent reads update and my book haul. And sorry if I get out of camera at one point because my foot is asleep right now and really uncomfortable. So, I'm going to stop the video right here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you liked it, please, please subscribe if you like what I have to say about books. And give this video a thumbs up if you like this particular video. And I hope you are continuing to enjoy your reading. And in case I don't see ya, um, you, you know, happy Christmas.
if I don't see you before Christmas. And here's hoping for a new good year. All right. Bye.